Jack, I am going to let you take over the integration discussion. So this is going to be your episode from here on out until we get to the grab bag. Of okay. Course. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I was, you got me a little nervous there. I'm not taking grab bag. <laughs> um, or, here we are. Next Cloud episode X of X. So I four, is this four? Five, I think last I time I said yeah five. Okay, so we're at episode five for Next Cloud, and I wanted to talk about a few. Uh, I picked three third party applications. I think it's perfect. The title of the show is Next Cloud Hash of Third Party Apps, and you you could take a guess at why I picked it. I think you know why after <laughs> after the first um, after taking a look here at the first third party application I picked out. Yeah, that's it perfect. Is, uh, not it's only the does checksum. it it's not only checksum. does it rhyme, but like y- yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. sense. So the three I picked, uh, just wanted to run through them briefly was checksum, EPUB reader, and only office. I feel like I picked the three easiest. I don't, I, I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. I really I, checksum was one I hadn't used before, and I picked it up. I saw it was out there, and I said, "Oh my gosh!" You know. To be able to send someone a file and then say, "Hey, this is the hash for it as well," uh, you know, just in case they wanted to confirm that's the actual file they downloaded or whatever they need. I don't use it all the time. Um, I'll tell you what, though. In oh, in my work environment, at least we have to hash everything uh, and confirm the hash we downloaded from whatever site is the same as you know what what we have on our local machine um in my personal life though i don't use checksum i'm not md5ing files all the time i don't wake up and go i can't wait to md5 this (laughs) file today but it's a cool feature if you ask me so i wrote up you know if you need to confirm the file you're sharing with someone else that it's the same file you sent to them use a hash i kind of wrote up a little sales pitch here for it uh so there's a third party application you can add and you can generate it for every file. I was so when you share a file, you can share the hash, confirm it. Now the one thing that they didn't have was sharing a folder, which I was just kind of expecting them to put I, I don't know how easy of a feature it would be. I almost zipping it up and then hashing the zip and then sending the zip over shared. I I was kind of thinking about it. It just sounds it's just easier just to let it go and only do files, but would have been a nice feature to have. So that's kind of the one limitation I found. Now for the hashes that you can pick out, it's pretty crazy. It's MD5, SHA-1, SHA-256, SHA-384, SHA-512, CRC32, and CRC32B. Now, I was familiar with all of them except... CRC32, and I had to... I'm actually looking it up right now. I was trying to think... Okay. Is it cyclic it's, redundancy check or something? Yeah. Like that? Yes. Boom. Yeah, so I think it's more more or less for... Is that for just data... Pair? Integrity. Is that just a... Com- well, that's... I mean, that's what a hash is. It just confirms data integrity. It doesn't do any encryption. It doesn't, you know, secure the file. It's just saying, all right, if I... We talked in Bitcoin what a hash is, right? If I take the same yeah. input, can I get the same output, right? And the output's always going to be random, except when you give it the exact same input. I thought CRC was for, like, bit parity. I, I don't know why I was thinking bit parity for some reason. I guess it'd be I mean, the same it, thing. hashes, same hashes thing. can be yeah. used in bit parity, yeah. but... Yeah. So, there isn't... It's, it's a small third-party application. If you need to hash your files, it's out there. Check it out. Uh, the next one was the EPUB reader, which I thought, I don't know why I thought, th- I thought there was one by default in just out of the box with NextCloud. Was because it Because I used to include it by default out of the box. And so, so was so that removed? That, there's, there's actually some history to that, but I'd like to hear what, what's going on with this one. This one is, sw- this one is pretty sweet, honestly. I really liked it. It's so, you know, with everything going digital, there's no reason not to have a digital book, right? That was that's my big shill on this. Uh, with the EPUB reader, EPUB, it's CBZ files and PDF. It's you're not getting into anything crazy here. Basically, you're able to read files. 
Uh, some of the major features include table of contents, bookmarks, and seamless reading. Although the major features, although these are major features of readers, it's nice to have it that are nice to have out of the box. You know, the one thing I really liked about Nextcloud was being able to pick up wherever you left off on whatever device. The other thing I wanted to note here, just for you, was that it does support a dark mode for reading. Just thought I'd toss that out there. Nice. I know you, I know you love your dark mode. Um, but really with the EPUB reader, you're getting, it's, it's similar to any, it's similar to any EPUB reader that's out there. I would say it's just embedded into Nextcloud, which I actually do prefer versus, I don't know if you use, uh, your browser at all to read EPUB files or PDFs, just like Not Vivaldi or Firefox. Typically. I, 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 I find myself doing that quite a bit. Uh, the nice thing I like about this is being able to pick up right where you left off. Um, and it's embedded into Nextcloud. So did you have some history behind the EPUB reader that you wanted to share with? Yeah, how it was there, apart? Was, there was an old version of this out there on the interwebs that got yanked for some reason. I forget, I forget the history. Um, but what I ended up doing, and if you go in the role, you'll actually see the history of the code there. I was grabbing the archive of it, unpacking it, changing the supported version number manually, and installing it. That's crazy. No, way. So you're just there ripping was, it on? There you're was, ripping it up. You were rip. Let me get this straight. You were ripping an unsupported version, unpacking it, going into a file, changing to say, "Hey, this is supported," and then deploying it. Yes, because it worked. That's that's crazy. It worked. It was. I, I think I also had to do one other thing, like I had to change like a Python library name or something like that. But it it worked. Um, because there was no EPUB reader because for some reason they were something, Just something about the API incompatibilities, but it still worked itself. So I'm like, wow. I just want an yeah. EPUB reader. Just yeah. put that on there for I got plenty of books on there. I want to read them. So, yeah, and I do read mostly on mobile, but like same, same deal. So yeah, that was, that was frustrating. Um, so I'm glad to see that there's actually an official way to do that now because that was versus backport <laughs> change code. It's pretty bad. That's it's pretty why. Bad. <laughs> I mean, it like anything else, right. It taught me kind of how the applications are, are, yeah. are set up. You know, they have a, they have a file in there that says it's supported up to this version number, or able to operate in this version number. And if it's, if the next cloud version is higher than this number, then don't allow it to run. And what you can do is you can just change that. Flip and the, yeah. Yeah. Flip the, look at Ant hacker man over there <laughs> flipping the version number, allowing it to run. <laughs> well, and you actually ran into that with the, uh, the mail thing, uh, when you were looking at the other apps, because you had to have that one updated. Yeah, I did. Um, that was one of the tricky things that we, I kind of ran into with, third-party apps and app applications in general was that, you know, you go to upgrade Nextcloud and you're at the newest version, major version, minor version, bump, whatever, what have you. And next thing you know, you log into Nextcloud and there's no applications. Your third-party apps are gone and you're like, what's going on? This <laughs> What happened? Yeah. And sure enough, you have to just open up the apps page where they all are and just open them all up that way or upgrade them all that way um or you can use a cool 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 little script um so yeah yeah so that was that was pretty pretty fun to implement and, and kind of dig down into that and and that's why i wasn't too afraid of implementing what i did right the, the application updates so uh yeah so i think uh, yeah. we be beat that one to yep. death um what else yeah, oh and, and then one the, thing uh, i did oh. see one thing i did see is that it does support bookmarking which is huge for me yeah it's yeah. huge for me. And I mean, talking about syncing across devices, that's exactly where you need it. You need it, right. you know, to, to sync across. Well, if you want there. to pick up your book, you you know, the thing I think about is 
picking it up from a laptop and then going to mobile. Well, not only that, but when I when I read it, I'm probably going to read on mobile, right? That's just that's just how I'm going to read. But then when I'm putting together my show notes, what I'm going to want is the bookmarks that I highlighted, right? When I was reading it, I'm going to want to pull those out and throw those into the show notes right. so I can have my talking points. Like, and if that doesn't transfer across devices, then I got to start manually typing things out like I had to with this thing because it's paper. <laughs> I'm not doing that again. Paper book. How what dare they? That? How dare they? What is this world you coming got, to? You could have got the mobile. You, you Don't sit here and act like you could have got the EPUB version. <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> The last one I had here was uh, Only Office. I love this one. I absolutely love this one. It's it's so nice to have. Only Office oh, is basically yeah. allows you to view, edit, and collaborate on text documents, spreadsheets, and presentations within Nextcloud using okay Only Office Docs. Basically, instead of Collabra, instead of having to spin up a full Collabra server, you're able to edit seamlessly whatever you know. I think it supports multi. It supports multiple document types, in just straight out of Nextcloud. And you and I, you and I, when we tested it out um, a couple of weeks ago, when I was up, you're like, "Hey, are you seeing these changes?" Now, granted, you couldn't find the backspace button on uh, mobile, but eventually, I, think, I did. Eventually, I, think that I did. But that ever. was ever. <laughs> so, again, with this one, uh, the one. The one thing I really enjoyed, or I guess what's there to enjoy about editing text document, not <laughs> much. <laughs> Presentation, not much. Excel, not much. Um, that it did support, it did support that ability for us to, you know, real time edit the same document. So call me a cop, a cop out. Uh, I don't know if you remember the one time in Open Source Club when you when I used the edit in git in github in github i opened the uh edit did a commit in github and then submitted the pr all through github i did all through the gui uh, this is my cop out this is my essential cop out for editing documents now instead of having to download the document open the document close the doc uh, save the document close the document re-upload the document now i can just open it up you know fix the typo or whatever and then back to it so it's another it's another jack cop out i guess if you want to call it that <laughs> well i mean it it works i mean it's it's something if i want to just make a change to the file and you know you you pair this with syncing a directory right and yeah. then i can i can work on my desktop i can do everything and then in the middle of whatever dinner hopefully not a date but like I whip, whip out my phone and, and I was like, oh, I wanted to make a change to that one. You know, I got a great idea and, you know, jot it down in, in our Q2 planning document or whatever. And um, boom, it's it's there. So that that makes it easily accessible. And I mean, come on, to be fair, who's not on mobile almost everywhere these days? Right. Stuff has right. stuff has to be accessible when you're on the move. And this makes that available to you. I don't I can't install a office suite on my phone i just need to be able to edit a file and this is how you do it right this is how you do it in a lightweight kind of way that works with what we have set up and to be honest it's pretty slick very and well the one thing i really like about only office another thing i really like about it you don't need collab you don't need to install a whole nother service to run it even if you're running this as an you know independent you basically have these features available to you out of the box you know, if you install the application. So, and something that that's out there, just ready to go, basically ready to go. What did they say? No, no installation, no something required, no. Really just a, uh, a short, short integration discussion. Just really wanted to cover what, I, I think what I wanted to get into more or less is what's out, what's out there, how to use it, why do you, maybe more of the why. Why to use it, or when would when when would I ever use this? There's a lot of stuff you could do by hand. There's a lot of ways to do it easier, though. So this yeah. is one of those ways. Um, so I think next episode we we might just continue down this path. 
Uh, I don't know. I've I've got a couple of applications I would probably want to touch on. Yeah, but we'll see where that goes. That sounds good. Other than that, I don't have anything else to add. It was a quick integration discussion. Honestly, I I, I don't have anything else. If you don't have anything else. I